Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, in today's video, we're gonna be working on a really large hand-tied gladiolus arrangement, but instead of using the gladiolus as a spike flower, we're gonna be using it as the focal flower and we'll need to do some altering to go ahead and get that done. I'm also gonna wrap that bouquet. It's gonna be really big, so the wrapping is gonna be a little bit different for it. It's a really big gift bouquet, but I thought as we go along and build this bouquet together, I wanna share six free resources on growing, selling, pricing cut flowers, also free resources on pest and disease information for your particular area. And my hope for this video is to really just open the conversation about free resources on growing and selling cut flowers. So I'm gonna share my top six and I'm hoping that you guys will share your top six as well because goodness, it seems like every day I stumble upon another great article, another great website, and I just wanna tell everybody about it. The information's out there, Sometimes it's just a matter of finding it. So it's 97 degrees outside today. I think it's like 85% humidity. So let's get inside into the air conditioning, make this bouquet together and have hopefully a really nice chat. So let me start by showing you the flowers that we're gonna be using for this design. This is basically an $80 design. It's a wrap design. And like I said, I want the focal flower to be the gladiola, but I don't want this overwhelming spike feel to the arrangement. And so actually I'm getting my spike from things like Celosia and Astilbe rather than my gladiolas. So what I've done is actually let these gladiolas open all the way up to the top. Instead of harvesting them, like this, like I normally would for a spike flower. I waited, let the whole thing open, and then I removed all the lower flowers. And this will still give me a base life of about four days. And so I've done that with all of these gladiolas, and we may need to even pick off one more so that we're only left with about three flowers at the top. So we have this gladiola and unfortunately the bulb, I think there was an issue with the bulb. So I'm not really sure what this gladiola is, but that's gonna be the main one we're gonna be using. We're also gonna be using some espresso. Now we're not gonna be using this gladiola, but I had to show it to you because I know we planted it together and it's blooming now. This is Katharina and it's that amazing cotton candy pink gladiolas, really roughly petals. It also has some deep pink stripes toward the center. So I just wanted to show you that. But here in its more natural form, this is definitely a line or a spike flower. So I'll just put those to the side for now. So what we're actually using for our spikes are some astilbe that has gone brown now, but I actually really like that because I'm going more for a moody vibe, a moody romantic vibe is what we're after. We're gonna use that celosia that we used the other day. I think the closest celosia to this that I know about is ruby parfait, but this is from a girlfriend's garden and she saved the seed. We're gonna also be using some dara. I have a few stems of Joe Pie weed that I wanna stick in. I also have some drumstick allium that has started to go over a bit, so it's kind of in its seed pod stage, but it's not dropping the seed as of yet. And so I wanna use that as well for some nice texture. I have just a few stems of Colorado yarrow. I would have normally used more of this, but this is going to someone's launch of their food truck. And so I don't really want there to be too much of any fragrance at all. And so that's why I held off on the yarrow. We'll definitely have to come in with some of these awesome purple red straw flower. We have a few stems of Black Knight Scabiosa. And then for the foliage, I'm using a mix of things. Here is Tiny Wine Nine Bark, and this is last year's growth on Tiny Wine, because you can see it has the seed pods. This is this year's growth on Tiny Wine. You can see the um, leaves are actually a little bit bigger, but there's no seed pods on it. So this needs hydrated a little bit longer, I find, than the one with the seed pods. And then I may or may not use this Kodiak Black Gervella. We'll just see. I want this to be pretty flower heavy, but let's go ahead and build this and talk about some free resources and we'll see what we end up with. So my only supplies for this are my floral tape and my snips. 
and I'm gonna build this bouquet just like I would any other spiraling or market style bouquet and just pick out a really strong sturdy stem to start with I'm gonna add about five different ingredients and varying textures give it a 45 degree turn and just kind of continue on in that manner and keep on building until the bouquet is done and at that point I'll green up the neck but with that being said let's talk about some free resources so it's really funny because in YouTube land, they say make people wait till the end of the video for the best information. Well, I don't agree with that at all. I, I say help people as soon as you can in the shortest amount of time possible. So the one website that has been incredibly helpful to me that I had never heard about the first like five years I was selling flowers is the Floral Design Institute website. So this is a website that is for florists, not necessarily for growers and people that are growing and harvesting flowers, but it has all the information that you need on their website because on that website, they have what they call the flower library. So you just go click on the flower library, then click on the exact flower that you're growing and that you need to harvest. It will tell you the base life of that flower, if it's ethylene sensitive or not, any kind of special conditioning that it needs, any special processing that it needs. It will also tell you as the florist, kind of the stage you would wanna buy the flower, which tells me as the person growing it, the exact stage that I wanna be harvesting it in. And the Floral Design Institute also tells you storage temperature for flowers. So overall, I feel like it's such a great resource and you know, one that just, I'm not sure why people don't talk about it, maybe because it's a florist website, but I feel like in terms of cutting, conditioning, and storing flowers, if I'm confused about that information, or if I'm not sure if something can go in the cooler or not, that is the website that I check. The next free resource on my list is going to cover pricing, and this is a website that you may or may not have heard of before, but it's the USDA Boston Terminal Ornamental Market Prices website, and I'll put that link in the description section below, but basically it tells you the going rate for flowers. So if you're looking for pricing information and you're wondering how many stems are normally in a bunch, or how to go ahead and price those stems. This is really a great starting point. I'll also put a translation of how to read the pricing system in the description box because it is pretty confusing, but hopefully by giving you some examples, it'll kind of clarify some of that confusion. And of course, prices vary so much based on location and can even be different just from one city to the next. But I do think it's a nice kind of starting point, a nice reference point. And once again, it's absolutely free. Now let's move on to a growing resource. So if I'm growing something from seed, I'm growing something from bulb, I'm always gonna go to my favorite supplier's website to get the best quality information on growing that particular seed or that particular bulb. So I love a lot of different seed companies, but in terms of a free resource on their website, I don't think you can be Johnny Seed and Supply. They just really have everything you would need. So you search that seed as if you're gonna go ahead and buy it. So take for instance, Celosia. I can even type in this exact Celosia. I scroll down to the growing information and it has basically everything there that I would need. It will tell you if the seed needs covered or not. It will tell you the temperature the seed wants to germinate at, any special instructions for the seed, if it needs stratification or not. Um, it will tell you days to maturity for that particular variety, which is super helpful. So even if I don't purchase a certain seed from Johnny's, I always kind of go back to their website in terms of growing information. They also have lots of growing sheets on the website. I'll put those in the description section below. Tons of free great articles, so so much great information on their website. And in terms of bulb companies that I really like, I really love the Longfield Gardens website. They invest a lot in education and have tons of great articles on all the different bulbs and also bare root perennials that they carry. Also, you could check out Awnings America. I like Awnings America specifically for ranunculus and anemone information. 
I also like the University of Maryland has some really great culture sheets for things like growing lilies in crates, growing tulips in crates, and I'll put all that in the description section. Another free resource is to visit the website of a particular flower society. So there's the American Dahlia Society. I think there's the North American Lily Society. There's an American Iris Society. I'll put those links in the description section. But if I'm ever having a problem with a particular flower, say I have a dahlia disease that I'm dealing with, I will go to the American Dahlia Society website and there's a page there, I'll link it, where they have all different PDFs, studies from universities where you can see pictures of certain diseases, how they went about diagnosing it and treating it. Once again, a great free resource. You can join the American Dahlia Society, but you don't have to, to read all those PDFs. They're absolutely free. In terms of a great free resource for pests, I would look to your local extension office. You can either visit their website. So for instance, here in Pennsylvania, we have Penn State University, lots of articles written by professors, some by master gardeners, and the focus really is on a lot of times pests and disease management. And when you go from one place to another, the diseases and pests can be vastly different. So talking to someone that's living and growing in your zone, I just feel like is such a valuable asset. I'm really surprised that more people don't call the extension office because there's someone there to answer your question. They've really dedicated their time and their life to helping other people in the garden and with dealing with pests and diseases. So definitely take advantage of these people, give them a call, send them your plant samples, whatever you need. So we're pretty much done friends. I think I will just wrap it up now. But last on my list, and really such a great resource to have, is people. People are your best resource. And so what I'm saying here is find a local flower friend, be it a large grower or a small grower, you know, and befriend them. I have a friend who has a really large flower farm. I took you guys there once. And I cannot tell you the amount of times that she saved me, that she's been there as just a listening ear when things go wrong. Sometimes we'll go in on beneficial insects together. Sometimes if I don't have enough of something, I'll go over to her farm. Of course, she rarely doesn't have enough, but there are some things that I have more of like peonies that she doesn't really grow a lot of, so she'll call me if she needs those. But having her as a resource seven minutes away from me is really more valuable than anything else. You know, just to be able to connect with someone who's doing the same thing as you, who has the same goals, who has a loving heart and a sharing heart, there's just immense value in that. So we can wrap these now. So what I like to do Let's just fold them on an angle like this. If it was a shorter bouquet, I would probably fold this up a while, but it's not, so I can just keep as is. Now I wanna go ahead and just stick my bouquet right on there. Beautiful. I just wanna cover up my wrap here. And I just like to use um, floral tape because that's what I grew up with with my grandma, but I see a lot of people just use rubber bands. Now I'm gonna fold in towards the left, fold in towards the right. Staple up here. And now we're gonna do that same exact thing, but we're gonna flip the bouquet over. So kind of make that sideways fold. And here's how we had it at first, but now what we're gonna do is flip it over the other direction. So we get a lot of nice, beautiful peaks. Same thing. Fold over to the left, over to the right. Beautiful peaks on that. Staple right here where my thumb is. And that's it. 
So there we have it, one extra large wrapped bunch ready to head out for delivery. I could also add two more sheets of tissue paper. I'm happy with the way this looks, so I think I'll stop here. If I wanted to do something extra fancy, maybe it's Valentine's Day, maybe it's an anniversary, I could do maybe some beautiful pink paper on the inside, two sheets of pink paper, and then two sheets of brown paper on the outside. I could put some ribbon on it. I know this is gonna go probably immediately in a vase of water and probably sit there on the food truck. So I think this is pretty good, but I hope that's helpful to see how I go ahead and wrap an extra large bouquet. Well, friends, thanks so much for hanging out with me a little bit today. I really just value your time so much, and I'm really thankful that you take time out of your day to spend some time here with me in my garden and arranging flowers and talking about flowers. I need to get these flowers out for delivery ASAP. Oh, did you just see that? What was that? That was probably a Japanese beetle. That's a very realistic happening around here these days. And contact your local extension office agent such as myself to talk about bugs whenever your heart desires. But I'm gonna get these out for delivery now. I wanna wish you a wonderful day and happy gardening. Bye.